Hey guys, I just want to come on here a little bit today and bring a, a message and, and I just want you to try to hang in there with me today. I, I have a message about uh, bitter waters, the bitter waters of life and I also have a prophetic word and a prayer declaration I'd like to pray over the body of Christ. We as believers are living in very turbulent times. The very atmosphere around us is screaming with the sounds of sirens, blasting out warnings of the prophecies that are literally jumping off the pages of the Bible. Many in this very dark and dying world are suffering very greatly. Many don't know what to do or even where to turn. There are masses that don't even know what to, to believe anymore. So many have been believing and believing for one thing or another, and everything just seemed to fall apart and become very bitter instead of the sweetness one was believing for. One thing remains true. We can trust our God to break through the bitterness of life. I will keep believing our God can and will turn all things bitter into something very sweet. Guys, I've learned through this thing called life that God has always been my all in all. He's been my all in all through it all. I know that I know that no one likes anything bitter. No one likes the bitter things of life. But bitter things are a part of life. Life is not all honey and no bees. It's not all roses. Roses are filled with, with fragrance and looks beautiful, but they also have thorns. I've also, uh, or I've always loved the phrase that says, if your life doesn't seem like a bed of roses, just remember who wore the thorns. Guys, it's like this. All people will face bitter waters from, from one degree to another. In Exodus chapter 15, verses 22 through 26, it says, So Moses brought Israel from the Red Sea. Then they went out into the wilderness of Shur. And they went three days in the wilderness and found no water. Now when they came to Merah, they could not drink the waters of Merah, for they were bitter. Therefore the name of it was called Merah, and the people complained against Moses, saying, What shall we drink? So he cried out to the Lord, and the Lord showed him a tree. When he cast it into the waters, the waters were made sweet. There he made a statute and an ordinance for them, and there he tested them and said, If you diligently heed the voice of the Lord your God and do what is right in his sight, give ear to his commandments and keep all his statutes. I will put none of the diseases on you which I have brought on the Egyptians, for I am the Lord who heals you. The marriage story in Exodus 15 is especially significant, guys. You see, in Exodus 14, God's people had just seen and personally experienced the greatest Old Testament miracle, the parting of the Red Sea and the drowning of Pharaoh and his entire army. The people take the first 21 verses of chapter 15 to rejoice and dance and sing over the great power of God. For them, life was good. And God was awesome. Hallelujah. But then something happens that quickly silences their song and steals their joy. Within three short days, they run out of water. When they finally find water, it is bitter and undrinkable. They are facing Mara, which means bitter in Hebrew. And they begin to grumble, gripe, and complain. How about us, guys? I know I've been there and done that too. But how do we respond when we encounter the bitter things in life? 
What comes out of our mouths when sickness comes or your job goes away or the finances dry up or your spouse wants out? What should we do when we face Mara? The wrong thing to do is grumble. The Bible says, do all things without grumbling. Philippians 2.14 God hates grumbling and he takes all of it personally. The people grumbled at Moses, but Moses wasn't leading the group. God was. They may have thought they were simply grumbling at a fallible man, but they were really grumbling at the infallible God. In Numbers chapter 14, they again grumbled against Moses, and God said, How long shall I bear with this evil congregation who are grumbling against me? I have heard the complaints of the sons of Israel, which they are making against me. Numbers 14, 27. The right thing to do, guys, is to trust and keep praying. Moses did not grumble. He cried out to the Lord. He knew that they were in need and the God who was faithful to bring them through the Red Sea just three days earlier, would be faithful to provide them the water they needed to survive. Guys, God did not bring you and me this far to drop us in the grease. In our merit, trust and pray and always remember God is faithful. The right thing to do is factor in the cross. God answered Moses' prayer by showing him a tree. And when Moses threw the tree in, the bitter waters were made sweet and the people could freely drink. What does that tell us, guys? In every Mara, factor in the tree of Calvary, the cross on which Jesus died. The cross transforms every bitter experience and turns every negative into a positive. At the cross, All our sins, past, present, and future, were paid for and erased. Paid in full by the blood of the Lamb. The cross of Christ makes all the difference in the world. No matter what Mara you may be facing today, God can use it for your good and His glory as we factor in the cross. And the very familiar scripture, Romans 8, 28, says, and we know that God causes all things to work together for good to those who love God, to those who are called according to his purpose. The cross can enable us to forgive the unforgivable, to love the unlovable, and to overcome the insurmountable. So what are we waiting for, guys? Let's take all of our bitterness of life and lay it at the foot of the cross. Only God can make all things sweet again. Our God is still well able to part the bitter waters of any Red Sea moment. Guys, I've been feeling led to to pray over the body of Christ. And I, of course, the Lord gave me a prophetic word. I want to pray a prayer declaration of faith over each of us. And I want you to Grab hold of the words that are prayed. Anyway, I just want to want to pray. And mighty God, we come before you in the matchless name of Jesus. That, and we declare that you are our defense and our defender around every corner of life. God has given each of us an expected end, and that end is victory. God is our God on this side of the mountain, and he is our God on the other side of the mountain. We declare we will trust, rest, and move forward one hour, one moment, and one second at a time, even when turbulence and instability are under our feet. With God in the lead, we will not look to the right or to the left. We will continue to press forward and never look back because we know God is not going that way. This has been pruning season, 
and God has been cutting to the quick to bring forth life and more fruitfulness within each of our lives. Even though the pruning has been painful, God is bringing forth more than we could have ever imagined. We humbly ask, but boldly declare that God is taking us across every limitation that stands before us. We ask for fresh revelations and fresh anointing to pursue everything God has called us to do. We will purposely and resolutely abandon ourselves to God's purposes, and he will this day and every day. We declare a breaker anointing is being released over each of us through this very prophetic season. We are in. We will fan the flames of our faith by the wind of God's Spirit. We declare a spiritual elevation is coming deep within our lives. We will choose to follow God's leading every step of the way. We declare the Lord will lead us to higher heights, even beyond imagination. We will always step out with zeal and great expectations. We declare angels of breakthrough are descending and breaking all barriers which would ever try to confine us in life, family, health, finances, business, and in ministry. We ask for the strength to stay the course knowing overwhelming joy is straight ahead. We will always stand our ground through every circumstance. God has been molding and shaping our destinies for such a time as this. We declare this is the season that we break forth in every direction. We declare the Spirit of God has infused us with the fire of God's Spirit. God's Spirit inside us will push back against every setback that would ever try to come our way. We ask for every time the pain of disappointments come, God's glory will flow in like oil and wine to bind up, to heal and to mend. Giants will be slain. Regions will be conquered. We will take our place among the roll call of the faithful. We desire to shake ourselves from all doubts and unbelief and cast them headlong into the assurance of God's faithful hands. When the battle's over, we will wear the crown. We will always remember that we are royalty. This is our identity as sons and daughters of God. We are part of the chosen generation, royal priesthood, and part of the holy nation who has been called out of darkness into God's marvelous light. We will always remember who we are and what we have and the power that is within us. Our God is unshakable, unchangeable, always conquering and mighty to save. When life is shaky, God is our firm foundation We declare when life is unpredictable, God is our sovereign creator. When life is painful, God is our healing balm. When life is bitter, God is sweet honey to our lips. We declare each of us will continue to hold firm to our faith and to the one who holds our future. We declare even through all the scars, the bruises, the deep wounds God will bring us through. Through Christ, we declare we will always survive what the enemy thought would surely take us out. We will strengthen, we will straighten our crown and walk through life like a boss. We declare God is good all the time. And all the time, God is good. And we declare all these things done. In Jesus' name, amen, and amen again. Guys, I heard the Spirit of the living God saying to me, remove that look of hopelessness 
for I will never leave you in the land of destitution. See the path parting and the way being made clear. You will have what you need for what is next. You have wondered and struggled to understand the how of it all, but see that all has been made ready. I love you so dearly. There is nothing I would not take care of for you. Even when others walk away, I will never leave you. When the world seems to turn on you, I will still be there holding your hand. I walk this journey out with you, no matter who quits or sends rejection. I know what is before you today and tomorrow. I am not too busy to attend to your days, whether they be days of joy or sorrow. I will be there with you through it all. Let my fire restore what was lost in your hearts and minds. Let me cauterize those wounds and heal all that has caused you to weep. It is not too late to experience the unspeakable Zoe way of life that I have given unto you. Focus on how I see you, for rich in blessings is my love. Command your eyes to see and command your ears to hear. People will speak against where you are going. Many will do it out of fear or their own insecurities. Be careful not to listen. Uh, Be careful not to let others control you. Pressure can lead you astray. No one else can go where you are to go or do what I have placed in your spirit to accomplish. Keep walking where others do not wish to go. In time, you will see the greater picture of the wise that you have been seeking. I have plans for your good, no matter how the horizon looks. Listen for the thunder in the distance. The lightning is breaking through the atmosphere to lighten your pathway. What was hidden will soon be revealed. Look closely so that you do not miss what is before you. My protection reaches far and wide. The new awaits you. When things appear broken, it is just because I am aligning the pieces into the correct order. It may feel chaotic for a season, but you are coming out better than when you went in. Trust the process and allow me to do the deeper internal work required to put you upon the rock that will withstand any situation and storm. I have paths laid out before you, and even when you walk on a different path, I will build a bridge to place you right where you belong. I have you swooped up into my arms this very day. My plans are only good for you, and there is no plan B. I will keep you on the path towards all that I have set aside for you. You will be victorious, no matter how the sky looks. Trust and believe, for my glory is yours. I have called you to travel a way that no one has gone before and to make ways where there was no way before. Though you have faced many obstacles, I have done this to prepare you for what lies ahead. I have called you to carve a way through the mountains and to build bridges over rivers of life that look like they cannot be crossed. This is why I have, I have put you in the fire again and again to make you sharper and more persistent than ever. Trust and faith are your increase in this hour. Let all that I am speaking to you arise like a mighty wind to blow away all doubt and fear. There is nothing that you can't conquer or achieve. Never forget who you are in me. I am sending fire down from heaven that will forge your broken swords back together again. What was broken will be made new. What was useless will come forth 
with a greater purpose than before. What was overlooked will be what carried you through to victory. I am placing in your hands the power and authority to cross over and remove what has been holding you back. I am the God of the moment, and I am in control of every moment. I have told you not to worry about tomorrow because I have all your tomorrows in my capable care. My angels guard, guide, and surround your lives and even the lives of your loved ones each and every day. This is your coming out season. You will rejoice and rise up and move forward by faith. Prepare to step into the atmosphere of the miraculous. I have you firmly established upon my foundation. Continue to war with the prophetic words which have been spoken over your lives. Keep praise on your lips because your weapon of war is a melody of praise for your Lord. I have equipped you and you are heavenly armed and firmly positioned. Hold on to my promises and never let go. What I have promised you will never shrivel or die on the vine. This is the hour and this is the time to become a great force that is being driven by the glory of my spirit. Continue to storm the very gates of hopelessness and despair. I will yet again set your hearts ablaze for you to take back all the joy that has been stolen from you. I am well able to cause you to soar once again and shout with a mighty shout. I have called you and appointed you to break forth in every direction. You are called to be witnesses. Stand strong and stand set apart. Stand tall and shine with the light I have put inside of you. Keep your eyes firmly focused on me and run this race knowing that I am there to carry you if I have to. I am in front of you, behind you, and at your side. Stand in my power and in my strength, and you will influence every place you go, and you will displace every darkness with my light. Never become discouraged, even if you only seem to find dry land around you. I will anoint you to be the spring from which my living water will flow. Do not be dismayed when you feel there is depression in all those around you, for I have sent you there to be a source of joy and life. Do not be downtrodden if all you see is darkness, for you are there to displace it by the light of my spirit. I have called you to do what seems impossible in human eyes, but when you look with mine, it will be completely possible. Take a hold of my hand and run this race with much fervor and joy. Keep looking forward and not to the current situations and surroundings. I know your hearts and what you are seeking, even in the unspoken. I even know the disappointments and pains that you reveal to no one else. The atmosphere is ripe and charged with my power and authority. Just follow the road before you. What you think is hidden is not really. Look again. I have been speaking mysteries with revelation over you throughout this season. I am drawing you closer to my heart in this present day. I will reveal to you the realm of eternity. My desire is for you to bask in my glory all of your days. I am well able to take you into a place where time stands still and where forever is what will fill the moment. Celebrate and let my joy surpass your steps. Just know I am always with you through every hour of every day. Let go of your striving. 
and let me run with that burden. You are walking toward the victory, and my kingdom is at hand. Do not look down. Look up, for your deliverance is at your doorstep. I hold nothing back, for you are worthy of everything that I have. You are not denied. You are blessed and highly favored, says the Lord God Almighty. Praise the Lamb of God. Guys, I just want to close with a great verse of scripture from the book of Nehemiah. Nehemiah 8.10 says, Then he said to them, Go your way, eat the fat, drink the sweet, and send portions to those for whom nothing is prepared. For this day is holy to our Lord. Do not sorrow, for the joy of the Lord is your strength. Guys, we don't have much longer. I feel we'll be home even before you know it. Prepare to leave all bitterness of life behind because we're getting ready to be caught up to meet our Lord in the air. Glory to God. I can't hardly wait. Guys, God bless each of you abundantly and Maranatha. I want to thank each of you so much for joining with me for today's video. But I want to ask a very important question. Are you saved? If you're not saved and would like to know Jesus as your Savior, know this. Today is a day for you your salvation. You never know what's going to happen tomorrow. Tomorrow may be too late. Just know that today is the day. Guys, there is no do-it-yourself salvation. No one's works will ever get them to heaven. The word of faith says, confess with your mouth, Jesus is your Lord and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead and you will be saved. And that's according to Romans 10, uh, verse 9. Guys, salvation is so simple. It doesn't take works. It doesn't take faithful church attendance. It doesn't take sacrificial offerings. It is not hard. In fact, salvation is so simple that anybody with a mouth and a heart can have it. If it took works, many people couldn't do it. If it took a certain level of intellect, some people could never achieve it. If you have never received this free gift of salvation, you can do so today by praying this prayer. Just repeat after me. Dear Heavenly Father, you said in your word, if you confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus and shall believe in your heart that God has raised him from the dead, you shall be saved. For whosoever shall call on the name of the Lord shall be saved. I believe in my heart that Jesus Christ is the Son of God. I believe he died on the cross for my sins and that he, he was raised from the dead. I am calling upon his name, the name of Jesus. I now confess Jesus as my Lord. So I know, Father, that according to your word, I am now saved. Thank you, Father, for giving me the gift of eternal life. In Jesus' name, amen. If you prayed that prayer and meant it from your heart, a miracle just happened. God swapped your human righteousness for the perfect 
divine righteousness of his son Jesus. God now sees you as spotless and blameless. In his eyes, you are a new creation. Old things have passed away, and all things have become new. You have received the free gift of salvation, and it will never be taken away from you. Welcome to the family of God.